This is a Grace Watchman. Uh, today I wanted to talk about complacency from the New World Order research community. Uh, so, I might ramble on here, but if you can, you know, listen through my monotone, monotone voice, yeah, that'd be appreciated. <laughs> Anyways, uh, there's a lot of problems with the research community, I find, and a lot of aggravations and here's one of them and it's a big one it's called complacency now people will go on and talk and talk and talk to their friends to their family to their co-workers about the new world order about the illuminati about government corruption you know whatever else they'll talk and talk and talk about it but at the end of the day what are they actually doing? At the end of the day, they're doing exactly what the New World Order wants them to do. And it's funny, because a lot of these people, and I'm guilty of some of the things I'll talk about, you know, I'll admit that. Uh, so, some of the things I'm talking about, I might have been guilty of in the past, or I am now. But th these things should be talked about, so I'm going to talk about them. So one thing is that a lot of these people, they will say, tell people, oh, you, you know, you should research more. You have all this time, but they probably haven't even researched, did a good long, you know, actual research session, in probably a month or more. Uh, a lot of people will go out and talk about that, you know. People will be like, oh, well, we have to be active and, you know, stop the New World Order. Well, what are you doing about it, you know. A lot of these people, they know, you know, TV's so bad for them, they continue to watch TV and get brainwashed. And they know it affects them, you know, subliminal messaging and all that. They will continue to um, look at it, you know. A lot of the people, you know, they don't join any groups. They're not joining a militia. They're not training. You know, they're not getting in shape, exercising, you know, eating right, stocking up, stocking up on food, you know. I mean, I realize some people, you know, they have a a budget uh, in their lives that, you know, a lot of people, yeah, they have a budget, you know, they're living on a tight budget. Some people are living paycheck to paycheck. I understand that. But that's not an excuse. You know, all I hear to nowadays is excuse. I can't do this because I don't have time. I don't do this because I work a lot. I can't do this because I don't have the money for it. You know, there's excuses, and they're not acceptable excuses at all. I mean, for example, you have, say you're living on a budget, and you can't, you know, live a prepper lifestyle, per se. You can't prepare. That's not an excuse, and I'll tell you why. Um, you know, there's many videos on YouTube and articles, you know, teaching how to prep on a budget, but I'll go, just go through it real quickly. Uh, you can easily just, um, here's one example. You can take two liter soda bottles, or say you don't drink soda, you can drink a, you can take any other bottle. And you take these old bottles that you, you ever drunk out of, you can just fill them up with water from your faucet. You start storing them in, you know, your, your closet or pantry or whatever you have. You know, you, you can do that, that's one way. You know, you, you do that, you fill up, you know, five bottles a week, you know, you'll be pretty good to go, you know, two months down the road. You'll have all this water stored up now, you know, uh... That's a pretty cost-effective way to prepare. You know, you go to the store, buy one, two extra cans of food. You know, but a year down the line, you have what? A hundred over a hundred and six. You have like a hundred and six cans of food. If you get two extra cans of food every week when you go to the grocery store, by the end of the year, you'll have a hundred and six uh, extra cans of good of food. You know. Simple things like that you can do. You know, it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna make or break your budget. I don't think if you buy one or two extra cans, you know, five or ten extra dollars a week. You know, uh, it'll be okay. You know, maybe just you know don't go to Burger King that week or you know whatever. Um, there's there's ways to get around it. Uh, there's ways to prep on a budget. So that's not an excuse. You know, uh, people say they don't have the time. Well, none of us have the time. We all work. Uh, some people just have more dedication than others. You know, you, you have to be dedicated. You have to be motivated. Um, uh, a lot of people don't understand this, but this is this is a war. You know, 
the Illuminati has declared war on us. You know, if you look up the document, Silent Weapons War, Why Wars, the name of it is. You look the document up, you know, it, it tells you right here that you can get the document in full. Uh, William Cooper's book, Behold the Peril Horse, that has part of it. Get the document in full um, somewhere around here if you just look it up. But Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars, that's a declaration of war against us, you know. Uh, Policy Committee of the Bilderberg Group, it was a document um, that basically they declared war on the American people. And this is a war. You know, you look up people like um, Schaefer Cox, you know, uh, look up people like, um, you know, William Cooper. You look at people like Charles Dyer, you know, all these people, you know, they've gotten, they, they've gotten killed. They've gotten imprisoned for this. You know, these are, are POWs, you know, yeah, here's Charles Dyer, you know, he, he's going to be in jail for, uh, actually it's not, it's not even showing him up, but just keep talking. He, he, he Charles Dyer, he's going to be in jail to, you know, 2050, you know, 2052 or something like that. He's going to be in jail for, or longer. I'm not exactly sure, but that's a long time. You know, they they, they just the the Illuminati stole half that guy's year. You know, William Cooper. They just left. You know, his daughters and his wife. You know, fa fatherless. Just killed him on his front porch. Uh, this is a war. People are being imprisoned. People are being killed. Um, Aaron Swartz. She said it was a suicide. I doubt it was a suicide. That man definitely got executed. You know, all these. All these people, you know, Charles Dyer, they, they demonized him, just like they did to William Cooper. They demonized William Cooper by putting all these warrants on for him. And then, uh, and then eventually they just killed him. And when it happened, nobody cared because he had all these warrants on him. They made him look like some crazy man that was just starting to the government, didn't pay his taxes, and had all these warrants out for him. And by the way, paying your taxes is not... A crime you're not paying your taxes is not a crime it a federal income tax does not apply to the majority of United States citizens um, I'm pretty sure I've done videos posted videos on this but in all these things Charles Dyer they said um, molested his own daughter and then you know you bring pedophilia into it oh everyone just steps back you know he did it they don't even look into the evidence, you know, if you actually look at it, at the evidence, his wife clearly set him up, um, when the FBI came to hit her and started asking her questions, and it was a revenge tactic of his wife, and this is obvious, you know, they were out to get him from day one when he was a Marine, his chain of command tried to court-martial him right there, but then he won that. You know, they tried to get him on having a 40 mic mic grenade launcher. You know, they, he won that, but he lost the pedophilia. And he had two hung juries on that case, mind you. So even the, the people in the jury room couldn't decide. Because there wasn't enough evidence. These, the Illuminati is destroying people's lives. They're killing people. They've taken out world leaders. People, I need to get this through to people's head that this is a war. We are fighting a war here. People have died. People have been imprisoned. People's lives have been ruined because this whole New World Order thing has declared war. We are in a war and people do not understand that. People are complacent and it. people need to start taking this war seriously. It's a serious matter. You need to start preparing. You need to start resisting. You need to start speaking out. You need to start resisting them by the means possible. You need to start making lists. Here's an example. You need to start making lists. Here's a perfect example of this. Uh, here's a list of websites from the government, as you can see, FBI.gov, CIA.gov, but there's others here. Twitter accounts. You know, this is a list. This is a great example of what we need. You know, 
uh, a list of Freemason lodges by state. There's probably one for every state here in alphabetical order. This is a great, you know, it has a website here. That's their phone numbers, their addresses, their, you know, the, the name of it. It has all these things, you know, it even has, you know, some information here, not recognized by mainstream counterpart, you know, some information here. Uh, this is a great list. Uh, it needs to be done more. And, you know, you find lists like this, you need to, you know, you need to save them. You can save it by easily just, uh, and if you have Windows, you can just click Save As. Um, and then it'll, it'll save it. Uh, I'm not sure how to do it on Linux right now. And that, but that's, that's another thing right there. I stopped using Windows. Um, right now on my operating system, I'm using Ubuntu Mate. Just because I don't really care much for the Unity desktop of Ubuntu. But... This is that's another great example. Operating systems like Windows and Mac, um, especially Windows though. Operating systems like Windows, you get the operating system, and it has all this. It has like a thousand app programs already on it. Even when you just bought the PC, it has pre-installed Windows on it, uh, and it already has all these programs on it. And a lot of these programs. Are there to track your location? Are there to mine your data? Are there to steal your information? And I realize, you know, no matter what you do on the internet, you're going to be tracked. You know, there's going to be some way. You know, like I'm, I have a YouTube channel. Google runs YouTube. Google's a very bad company for you know privacy. I understand this, you know, um, but you know, trying to stay away from these companies as most as possible. You know, trying to make them do a little bit more work to find your location and to mine your data making them do a little bit more work work that costs them time that costs them money because they have to hire these people to do it they would have to pay them hourly to do this it costs them time they have to put more resources into the methods of trying to track you down and trying to see what you're up to you know even if they even if you're not you know foolproof even if it's not you know you're completely secure and off the grid and you're completely you know you know encrypted you know and have encrypted uh ways of browsing and all this stuff you know even if you're not completely 100 percent secure you're still making them do more work to find you and to see what you're up to and that's a win for us making them do more work making them put more resources into you making them put more hours and more money into you to find out what you're up to that is part of war that is just one tactic you know and the purpose is you know obviously to be as secure as possible but even if you can't even if you're like oh well there's no way to do it so you know you might as well just use windows you might as well just you know use google uh you know that's not the greatest you know thing to do you know you're costing them more money more time to by trying to stay off websites like that uh for example right now uh my main browser i use a lot is um Rob, you probably don't know about this, but uh, Brave Browser, and as you can see here, uh, they have a, a shield right here. You can do uh, HTTPS everywhere, which that's an extension on Chrome and a lot of other browsers. But right here, they have a built-in, you know, block phishing, block scripts. They have all this stuff. Block third-party cookies because you don't want cookies enabled ever. Um, you know that it and it has a ad blocker in it, but you can you can change that if say you know there's a website or something you want to support or YouTube or you want to support that makes that off a of living. You know I don't make any money off any website or YouTube, and I don't want to sign a contract or anything like that. But uh, this is a this is a great browser. This is actually still in beta too, and they have a Bitcoin um, a Bitcoin wallet built in that they just added this is, but this is still in beta this is, they're not even on version one yet it's, this is still in beta um this is this is a good browser it's it's actually pretty fast too it's a pretty fast browser um and that's probably because they block a lot of the ads and a lot of the tracking and so now your web you know your web pages are loading faster um this is a good browser I stopped using Google Chrome. I'm using Chromium. I realize it's still part of a, uh, still run by Google, but there's 
it's a bit more secure, you know, it's, there's a bit more privacy, you know, there's not as much tracking, you're not connected, you know, you're not signed in with Google uh, when you use Chromium, um, so they can't, they can't really track you as much. I started using, you know, DuckDuckGo as my search engine, you know, uh, this is a pretty good search engine for, uh, for privacy lost my words this is a pretty good engine search engine for privacy right here um, their whole thing is you know we don't track you uh, they that's their whole thing you know you can you can read all the things where they say right here to you know all their privacy policy and whatever else but this is probably one of the best you know there's other ones like um, start page you can use uh, duck duck is pretty good but you know just make it a little bit harder for them you know uh, you know, you're talking about something important, you know, maybe use, uh, maybe use Freenet, or maybe use Tor. Or actually, I mean, actually, Tor is not as secure, you know, you definitely need a VPN, but, uh, start using, you know, dark web services like Freenet or Tor or I2P to communicate, you know, don't always use Facebook to talk to your friends, especially if it's about something important, you know, um, maybe use some, uh, internet relay chat, uh, if you're on Windows, MIRC is great, if you're on Linux, you know, you can use HexChat, um, you know, uh, there's lots of ways to be around it. You know, use a use a VPN. Uh, I got Express VPN running right now. Uh, I'm actually, probably gonna probably get a new one. But as you can see, uh, already connected right here. See, I'm using VPN. Um, VPNs are great. Hide your location. Um, and also, if you're torrenting. Uh, and seeding a lot and uploading a lot of stuff it'll hide your location so uh, your ISP internet service providers don't really know what you're up to because a lot of ISPs don't like you torrenting because um, you know you can torrent illegal stuff uh, I just do it for information but and I wouldn't recommend torrenting illegal stuff because you know it's someone's work so they should be paid for it but Torrenting is a great way to keep the internet safe. Um, back to Linux, so you, you can use Linux. Don't use Windows because Windows has these programs built in, just like I said, to just track your location. You know, Linux is a lot more safer with that. Uh, there was that thing about Ubuntu um, in the start in the search bar that they take your information, but you can turn that off. Um, Linux is a lot better. It just comes with you know the programs you need. And there's no programs running in the background that you don't know about that are taking your lo uh, your location and all your data. And just just make it a, a little bit harder for them, you know. And this is this is your privacy, you know. If you're doing things, you know, you 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 want to be you want to have your privacy, you know. It could save your life one day. Uh, you know, you you never know. You never know who's trying to track you down. Um, you know, just, just make it a little bit harder for them. Um, and may, many of you might have seen, uh, yeah, this this page right here. I've spoken out about Anonymous before. But, um, you know, recently I've, uh, I've changed my mind on them a little bit. Uh, as you can see, this is Anonymous. Uh, he, 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 the problem I have with Anonymous and I've always had is that they're one Guy Fox. All right. Guy Fox. The Guy Fox mask they always use. Uh, you know, many of you probably have seen it. You know, everybody's seen it. You know, Guy Fox, Be for Vendetta. You know, that that whole movie was, you know, just, just uh, a joke. And here you see, remember, remember the 5th of November. That's where it comes from. The 5th of November, the Guy Fox. Guy Fox was a Jesuit. Uh,. That's the problem I have with Anonymous. They use a mask. They say they're against Illuminati, but they use a mask that was is based off a you know a Jesuit. Remember, remember the fifth of November. You can see someone here from Anonymous posting this. And it's just ridiculous. You know, Guy Fox was a Jesuit. He tried to bomb the English Parliament and King James, who won to overthrow the English government. And to install a Catholic monarchy ruled by the Vatican and the Jesuits. 
and two, to stop the translation of the King James Bible. You know, the problem I have also is that, you know, their motto here, we are legion, we do not forgive, we do not forget. You know, that's the exact words that the man with the demon in him, I think it was in the book of Mark, um, said to Jesus. You know, the man that was possessed, that's, those are the words that the, the devil spoke, basically. Um, but And, you know, an, an, what, one other problem is that um, the emblem, if I can show you right here, uh, if it comes up, the emblem of anonymous is the same. Uh, you can see, all right. So you see the leaves around it in the in the the globe. That's basically you know, the same as the United Nations symbol, right there. Um, anonymous symbol is the same as the United Nations symbol. Let's see if something shows up. No, I should show you it separately. Well, it shows up, but you can see how it's pretty similar. Uh, you know, just look how similar it is. The leaves, which, by the way, the, these same leaves are also on the Great Seal of the United States, which everyone knows. The dollar bill, all the symbology about that. I would hope you know about that by now. Um, basically the same thing, you know. You, you see the, the globe here and the leaves. And you see the globe here and the leaves. So, you know. Lots of bad things about Anonymous, and a lot of their members kind of, you know, socialist in tendency, but I will give them credit. You know, I will give them credit. Like, this is a target list for taking their websites down. That costs some time and money. You know, Anonymous in the past has, Anonymous in the past has taken down uh, websites or hacked into and tricked the systems of MasterCard. They've taken, I think it was like a million dollars from MasterCard. And what they did with the money is they ended up giving the million dollars to charity, is what they say. Uh, I don't know if that's completely 100% fact. Don't quote me on it. Uh, but that's what I've heard. Um, they've taken down things like PayPal. They've taken down things like um, you know, government websites. They've taken down... What did they take out? They're taking down a lot of major corporations' websites. They, I'm pretty sure they've taken down Amazon. You know, they've they've costed them millions and millions of dollars by doing this. This is you know a, a great example of resistance. This is a great example of waging war on your enemies. You know, um, you know where are all the great you know William Cooper followers? You know William Cooper had like millions. Of listeners on this broadcast, there's a million pe millions of people in anonymous right now. Why can't all these you know William Cooper people get together, start doing things like this? You know, instead, uh, and I might be guilty of this, but instead, what all the people who used to follow or listen to William Cooper are doing is they're arguing whether Doyle Shamley is a shill or not. You know, that's why I haven't made a, a million videos on him. I made a couple, but. Um, you know, instead, that's what we're doing, you know, um, you know, instead people are arguing, you know, that William Cooper is outdated and we should just, you know, focus on other things, even though they like William Cooper, you know, it's just stupid arguments, stupid shit, you know, I mean, so I give anonymous props, you know, they've actually taken on government websites, you know, they, they caused the government of Tunisia to completely resign and to completely be taken over, you know, I give a Play things like Anonymous props. I've made, a, 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 I guess, a couple of videos condemning Anonymous, and I will condemn Anonymous in the future. But this is an example of how resistance should work. You know, they've cost the government, they've cost the Illuminati time and money. You know, they've attacked the Church of Scientology. You know, that's a very evil organization. That's part of the mystery schools. Church of Scientology. You know, that is a, that's a mystery religion right there. Anonymous has attacked it. You know, they've done more than a lot of people, maybe at the may possible exclusion of the militia, which the militia is pretty much infiltrated too. Same with Anonymous. But, you know, the only p things that I've actually seen that have resisted the Illuminati is probably the militia and the Anonymous. 
and I, I, I condemn both of them. I, I lean towards more. Of the, I lean toward more towards the militia. I believe in the militia. Uh, but the the problem with the militia is there's so much informants. So much informants in the militia. So much people just trying to instigate something. You know, uh, so much hypocrites. Half the people in the militia, if not more, you know, are just like, yeah, let's let's elect Trump. Like, let's elect. Are you serious? You know that guy who you know just like got rich off scams. You know Trump, the one who the Simpsons predicted would be, you know, in power. You know Trump. You know the the one who's a member of the Illuminati. And then you know it'll be another George Bush, and all the conservatives will just trust Trump again. And Trump will take more of our freedom away than Obama did. You know, I, I guarantee it. People people are just very misled, very complacent. And that's the main thing that I want to talk about, that I'm trying to talk about. Although now I'm just steering off into being, people being misled and disinformation, which is another problem. But that's the main thing is... You know, complacency. People just go about their daily lives like there's no war going on. People go about their daily lives like like people haven't died for this cause, you know? Like, they can just continue to live as they've lived. Like, they haven't found out anything new. Like, they don't know about what's going on. You know, let's just watch football on the weekends, you know? Yeah, let's just, you know, spend all my money on a, a new car loan. You know, you have to make sacrifices. You have to make sacrifices, man. You can't just, you can't just live like that. It's all about sacrifice. That's what freedom's about. You know, the, the saying goes, you know, freedom isn't free. It should be. Freedom should be free. But it's, sadly, it's not. Uh, you know, maybe if we pay for freedom in this generation, the next generation won't have to pay for it. You know, that's, that's the hope. You know, our posterity. That's what this is all for. But, you know, another, another thing, life is short. Life is short. Uh, you really want to, you know, and life is short, so you might as well, you know, get the best out of life. You know, party. Live in all these sins and lusts, or you know, do something great with your life. You know, do something great where your you know your grandchildren, great great grandchildren, and on and on can look back and and say, my grandfather. You know, he died. He he fought for me to be free, and he did everything in his power for me to be free. You know. That, that is what I want to do with my life and have been trying to do. You know, that, that is the greatest thing you can do with your life. You know, life is short and you shouldn't waste it partying. You should spend your life Doing something that will make you remembered. Spend your life that will make all the other years of people's lives that will come after you better. It's a selfless service kind of thing. It's uh, it's being a man of principle and being a gentleman or a lady. It's being a man or a woman of principle. And you have to have principles that you're ready and willing to die for. You know, that's what William Cooper said. I just, I don't know what's happened to people. This, there's all, this, this is another thing. There's all these people that know about the New World Order. That speak to their friends and families and co-workers about the New World Order. Almost daily. But, when it comes down to it, they're doing the same old thing that they're doing before they even knew about it. They're doing the same old thing 
that their friends and family and co-workers are doing every week, every Sunday, every work day. They're doing the same thing. The only difference is that they know it's wrong, but they continue to do it. That's the only difference. And that, my estimation, could be worse. My estimation, that's worse than someone who hasn't woken up yet and doesn't see the truth. It's worse to see the light and to walk away from it. That's worse. You know, and it's pretty bad for the people that don't see the light and, you know, put put a piece of paper over their head or put a bag over their head so they can't see the light. You know, that's pretty bad too. I'm not sure which one's worse. But I'm talking about people that just don't see it and don't, have maybe never even been exposed to it. Or, you know, just haven't even got there yet. And maybe they will in the future. You know, I'm talking about those people. You know, that's worse. Um, you know, I mean, in my opinion, when, once you... I don't know. Maybe other people can. But once, once you learn about the evil of the world, the true evil of the world, and studied it, I, I don't see how you can ever go back. I don't, I don't see how you can just let the evil continue. You know, I, I would feel too guilty if I was doing that. I would feel too guilty. I would be like, what am I doing here? You know, there's these people dying. There's, you know, a satanic order trying to take over the world and kill millions, billions of people, depopulate the planet, and I'm just sitting here, like, watching football. Or drinking on the weekends. Like, what am I doing? You know, I couldn't. I couldn't go back. Some people, I guess, can. I would just feel too guilty. And, I mean, what makes me special? What makes anybody special? That some people have to die for freedom and and you don't. That whenever the outcome of the war... If, if we get lucky and the outcome of the war is freedom. What makes you special that you didn't have to fight for it? You know, why should you get to reap the benefit of freedom that I fought for? And honestly, that's kind of what freedom is about, you know, to reap the benefit of freedom, even if you didn't do anything, you know, because freedom is a natural born right from the creator. And unfortunately, Satan is the ruler of this planet. And if you don't believe me, look in the Bible where Satan offered the kings the kingdoms of the earth to Jesus how could satan offer the kingdoms of the earth to Jesus if satan didn't own the kingdoms of the earth think about it satan is the king of this planet pretty much always has been except the garden of eden <laughs> and except the nation of israel and judah and for a time, possibly this country, and maybe some other exceptions around the world, brief hip periods of history. But for the most part, Satan has always been the ruler of this world. Always. So ask yourself, what are you doing to stop it? You know? Uh, you know, a lot of Christians might say, you know, it's written in the Bible, we can't do anything about it. And, you know, that's true. That is pretty true. But the Bible also says that no man knows the hour or the day or the week or the month. No man knows the time of this new world order that will actually, you know, dawn upon the world. Nobody knows when the Antichrist will rise. So, you know, personally, my interpretation might be wrong. But personally, I take that as kind of a thing like, well, God's telling me no man knows the hour or the day. So I might as well, you know, I think God is basically saying that don't really worry about it. You know, if you're saved, you'll be raptured up, you know, when it happens. If you're saved. So just trust in the Lord for that to happen. But until then, live like you would. Live like you would if you didn't know that it was about to happen. Because... We honestly, people say, oh yeah, you know, the the signs of the times are here. We, you know, the end of the world is coming. I believe, you know, this is probably the last generation. 
Uh, I believe, you know, that world probably will end in the next, say, 40 years. Um, but we don't really know that for a fact. You know, that's just our, that's just what we think. It's just what some people believe. And people have been saying the world's going to end, you know. It's nothing new. So who says we're right? So I say we should live like, you know, we always have. We should live like it. We don't. That like it's not going to come, because it couldn't. And we don't know it for sure. The Bible says that. We don't know it for sure. So we sh we should do everything in our power to resist it. You know the Albigensians, for example, in uh, France and Italy, the um, the Dominicans of the Counter Reformation of the the Vatican. The Dominicans uh, went over there, and the Vatican basically just slaughtered these Albigensians, these Bible-believing Christians, which I believe they were. Uh, slaughtered them, men, women, and children. They wiped out their entire culture because they were Bible-believing Christians. They went into their cities and villages, murdered them, burned it to the ground. The Albigensians fought back, though. The Albigensians took up arms. There was a battles that were fought. Some of them they won. There were battles fought against the Dominicans, against the Vatican. They fought them and killed them. Bible-believing Christians did this. They could have said, well, the world's ending. It's all up to God. Let's just trust God. No, they just lived their lives like they normally would if the world wasn't ending or if it was. That's how we should be. You know, all the Christians... Always just said, you know, just leave it up to God. He would, he would have what he wants. Because I believe in free will, that God gave us free will. Because if God didn't give us free will, God's will would be here. And nobody would sin. There'd be no new world order. be nothing. So that debunks Calvinism right there. Because if we didn't have free will, there'd be no sin. If Because God's will is not for people to sin. You know, God, it says in the Bible, he wishes everybody be saved. So clearly we have free will because everybody is not saved. That just that's a very short way to debunk Calvinism. Very easy way. You know, just, just take my warning. You know, start prepping. You know, start making lists of our enemies. This is what we need. We need list of our enemies. We need locations, names. We need names. You know, we need more cooperation amongst people you know not just making a comment on a youtube video which by the way i do appreciate i like reading your comments but not just doing that not just you know making posts on facebook and not just talking to your co-workers about it because that's another thing that i want to bring up is that people are like people just go yeah well you know i'm just gonna you know spread the knowledge as much as i can you know i'm just gonna you know, try and wake up as much people as I can. You know, years ago I gave up on that. I say, let's take a stand. Let's fight with what we have now. And I'm not, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not going out and saying, let's go murder some police officers. Or let's go, you know, kill the Rothschild family and bomb their mansions or something. And I'm not saying that. But I'm saying, let's, let's resist them. Let's fight. Let's start making... You know, supply lines, let's start making safe houses. You know, let's start pulling our money into this. Spend money on this, because this is a war. The Illuminati, sure as hell, is putting their money into this. We should, too. With the little money that us pe peasants have, we should get put towards the cause. And I, I'm sure a lot of you, some of you, have. But... I think everybody needs to get more serious about this. Everybody needs to get more serious about what's going on here. You know? What people, what little people we have is enough to fight them. What people that do believe that do know about the New World Order and the mystery schools is enough to take the fight to them. Is enough to win the war. And they might have 
sheeple behind them. But when it comes down to it, there's more of us that know and are dedicated to fighting the New World Order than there is of them. There's more of us. And they will lose a lot in their ranks when an actual war, a hot war, does start because we're kind of in a cold war. And don't get that term wrong. We are in a cold war. But people do die in cold wars. North Korea and South Korea are in cold wars, yet people die there. You know, they set up bombs and mortar rounds all the time. You know, they've uh, shut down a whole factory. You know, North Korea just did recently of South Korean workers. You know, so people do die in cold wars. And that's kind of what we are in against the New World Order right now. An information war, a cold war, anything you want to call it. You know, stop, stop listening to these disinformation agencies, these shows. Because a lot of you, you listen to these people for entertainment. You listen to people like Alex Jones for entertainment. And it's the truth. A lot of you, you get a, you get a thrill out of it. Out of, oh, the world's going to end in two days. Let's tell everybody. You get a thrill out of it. And don't lie to yourself. You know, accept it that you do. And it's just in your nature. It's probably in all of our natures somewhere that people that are attracted to this cause, you know, they they like it. You know, we maybe we're all adrenaline junkies, you know, we like danger, you know, who knows? But you can't you have to go past that. You can't be like that. You know? You you just you can't. You have to be better than that. We just this complacency. This we need to start learning. We need to start, like I said, making names, making lists. You know, even you know, become tech savvy. Do some of the stuff anonymous does. You know, start costing them time and money. I support that. You know. Although, I can't officially support it, because it is a felony, so I'm not telling you to do it. But what I am saying is, it's a good way to resist. It is a good way to resist. You know, so we can talk bad about Anonymous all we want. We can say that, you know, their, their motto is from the Bible, the words of Satan, you know. We can say that, you know. Guy Fox was a Jesuit. We can say that all we want, but at the end of the day, what have you done that's better than what they've done? You know? And I'm not talking about a million mass march, you know, that was just stupid. I'm not talking about any of those things. I'm talking about, you know, taking down websites to the government of Malaysia. I'm talking about hacking into the FBI and releasing got documents. I'm talking about that. So what have you done that's you know better than that? You know, we're in a war. People need to start taking, it, start taking it seriously, you know. So my advice, get with those who are fighting, who do care about the New World Order, no matter where they live, no matter race, religion, or creed. You know, even if, you know, you have to, team up with Muslims, and I'll be the first to speak out against Islamic terrorism. Believe me, I will be the first. I'll be the first to go over there and take up arms against ISIS. I'll be the first to do it. I, I've contemplated it. But even if you have to team up with a Muslim, even if you have to team up with a pagan, that all believes almost the same things as the New World Order, but understands that the New World Order believes these things, understands the agenda of the New World Order, and even if you have to team up with someone like that, do it. We need all the people we can get. Don't only just team up with patriots or team up with uh, Christians, you know? Team up with anybody who's willing to resist evil. I'm not saying trust anybody. I'm saying cooperate with people. And that's another thing. I've heard a lot that 
well, I don't want to join a militia because there's FBI informants. There's solutions to this because, like I said, there is no excuses. One, you can form your own militia. Now, this militia doesn't have to even be a public militia. It can be a private militia. It can be just you and two other people. As long as you have a standardized caliber rifle, a standardized caliber amongst your little group, and you train at least once a month and stay in physical shape, then you're on your way. You have a plan. You have a, let me say, a fallback method in case shit hits the fan. In case the world is without law. Without rule of law. W-R-O-L. Uh, start doing these things. And um, another thing about that is the militia. Alright. So when a war starts, yeah, we might have informants. Go to the militia meetings. Even if you think there's an informant in this particular militia go to them stay to keep a low profile they don't you don't have to make friends with everybody you know, I'm a pretty antisocial person myself uh, but go to them see what they're about you know communicate with some people you know it's always good to have contacts you know and if you are well versed if you know about informants and whatever else if you know about them you'll be able to pick them out if you're well researched I'll be able to pick them out. So, you know, go to them. Talk to people. It's better to have contacts. You know, it's better to actually know who's actually doing something. Because even if some of those people in the militia are misled, or very misled, at least they're doing something. At least they're not just sitting on their ass. So it's good when it's a fan scenario, it's good to know who's actually trying before it should hit the fan. You know, go to them. You don't have to be a, a good member. You know, you know, you don't have to go to it every week. Go to it every now and then, see what's going on. Keep tabs. It's always good to keep tabs. If you think militia is your enemy, you know, keep your enemies close. Think about it. You know, uh, if you think there's that much informants in there that the militia is our enemy, you know, keep tabs. Good to keep your enemies close, isn't it? You know, and you'll get contacts. You might learn something. You might learn something about, you know, guns or, or tactics that you can go train up your uh, uh, militia with two of your friends. Or maybe you can meet, you know, two people in there that, you know, they believe the same thing that, oh, there's this fucking informant in here and I don't want to, you know, I don't, I don't like informants. And maybe they're pretty awake too. And now you, now you just met, you know, two other people that you can, you know, now you can branch off and make your own thing, you know? There's a lot of solutions, you know. You shouldn't stay away from groups like the militia just because there might there might be an informant in a militia. And there's thousands of militias out there. I'm sure you can find one without an informant in it. I'm sure it's possible. Especially if you live in, uh, you know, the western states or the southern states. Because there's a lot more there. You know, if you live in a place like New England you know, or New York, you know, you might have a problem. But, uh, yeah. So, you know, get a VPN. You know, there's free VPNs. Uh, BetterNet for it's an extension for Chrome. I don't know if it's on Firefox, but get it on Chromium or Chrome. You know, that's a VPN. You can use that. There's free VPNs out there. I use a paid version because it's faster, it's better. There's more locations you can go up to, and it's not just for one browser. You know, I pay for mine. Uh, you know, get a VPN. You know, try and you know stop using um stop using Windows. You can look up how to install Linux on your PC. Uh, you know, if you have you do work on your PC, or, you know, if you requires it for work, you know, you can do boot it or, you know, maybe just put it on a an old machine, you know, an old PC that you don't really use and, you know, do your web browsing through that. Um, you know, Tor is a good thing. Uh, I wouldn't suggest that just because it's low, high latency, you know, it's slow. But you can use it sometimes, you know. Tor is a, probably didn't mention this but Tor is actually it was developed by the Navy 
you can be tracked through that through exit nodes, so that's why everybody recommends you use a VPN with Tor. This video is probably pretty long, but I wanted to get a lot of information out there. I probably repeated myself a bunch of times, but I want to get this through to people. And I want to get it through hard that this is a war. You know, people, you got to start acting like it. You got to start acting like this is a war. Because it is a war. People have died. You might not have known them. You might not have cared about them. You might not even know it happened. But it did. You know, uh, you might not think that could happen to you. Well, probably, honestly, you probably won't if you don't speak out. But, you know, when people speak out for something, you probably know that something's going on that you should probably pay attention to. And that you should probably... Be the better man and do something about, you know. Uh, that's about all I have to say at risk of repeating myself some more. Um, yeah, people really need to start being complacent. Stop being complacent. Start acting like uh, that. What is what? What this is? You know that this is a war. This is it's a serious one. It's a war for the survival of humanity. It's a war for our future and our children's future. It's a war for the future of the world. You know, it's a very serious business. Stop being so complacent, please. You know, start trying to get with those who want to do something about it. You know, you can always inbox me. Uh, you might not know this, but my Facebook is linked to my YouTube if you go to the About section. Uh, you, know, you can message me. You can email me. Uh, inbox me, and I'll give you my email. You know, you, you can talk to me through uh, Internet Relay Chat. Um, it's Grace for Watchman, same, same YouTube channel. Uh, you, can, you, know, you can Skype me for all I care. You can Google Plus me. Uh, if you want to talk, if you have no one else to get with, get with anybody who, you know, believes and wants to stop the New World Order. You know, that's just the main thing. Get with people, start collaborating. But either way, you know, I will fight against Illuminati if, if I have to fight alone. Because I'd rather stand for truth alone. And living a lie with the majority of people, or all people. That's just me. You know, I want to do something right. I want to do something good. So try and resist them, but you know, first make sure you are prepared. Make sure you're set up so you can you know, make sure you have a gun and ammunition. I would suggest that at least have 2,000 rounds of ammunition in your preferred caliber uh, at all times. You know, have at least three months of food and water and medical supplies on you. And also, you know, have a way to get more. You know, buy some seeds, buy some silver. Because you buy silver, that'll, that'll do you good. Uh, you know, buy some non GMO, you know, heirloom seeds. Uh, buy, you know, silver. I have a way to prepare in the future, you know, bad times could come. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, God God bless every single one of you. I hope everyone makes it out alive that plan on doing something and standing with me. I hope God blesses all of you and blesses our cause.